We love using the fourth axis on our Tormach, and we've actually done a number of video tutorials, like you can see here, covering how to do different fourth axis work in Sprout Camp. It's super easy once someone shows you how to do it. But we were trying to make this part the other day, and we ran into a couple of fourth axis problems. We've since figured those out, thanks to Jason for over at Tormach for helping out with that code. So let's walk through how we can do some more complex fourth axis work to get this part done correctly, talk about the errors that we also got from it, and then go make some chips. Welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. Let's quickly show the problem that started this whole ordeal. Normally what I would do on a fourth axis job like this is go new, 2D contouring. Complete misnomer because it's not really a 2D contour. But the idea is that you're selecting a specific lined geometry like this. So the CAM software is actually ignoring the solid model. It's just taking what you tell it. I clicked curve there. Now the toolpath doesn't look correct yet because what you have to do to make 2D contours work on fourth axis is select base surface. Once you click base surface, go ahead and select this face here because that is our base surface. Change the position to the X because it's running along the X. Then you can click OK. That should work except now what we've got to do is just tell it our zero. When you choose base surface, that becomes Z zero. So that's zero. We only need to go start it up, say, 0.2 inches. And we'll change the tool to, for now, just to show off the demo here, a 3 16th inch end mill. OK, all I've got to do now is flip, flip that tool path. Of course, it didn't do that to me when I was practicing. There we go. And we can do it in one depth of cut. And I thought, easy enough. We're good to go. And if we go hop over to simulation and simulate this, we can adjust the lead in, lead out. But I thought, we're good. This looks, uh, this looks totally you know, right when you glance at it. But that's actually not a good toolpath. Take a look. If we turn on the geometrical model, whatever visibility, you can see we've got major, well, major depends on your tolerances, but it's not right. You've got all this material here, and it has to do with stuff that honestly, I don't really understand. I mean, I kind of understand it, but it has to do with where it's viewing the center of the tool is what's driving the tool path versus the edge of the tool. I'm not going to dwell on that. Let's fix it. What also occurred to me as a problem is I needed some sort of a fourth axis roughing strategy where I could rough out the majority of this open space versus just doing 2D contours to kind of peck around. Let's say that the area here, say, was, was so much bigger, you'd have to rough it off, pain in the butt. We figured all of that out. So let's walk through that from scratch. We're going to go project new. No. I'm going to go to import. We're going to import our IGES part. There is our solid model. It happens to be oriented correctly, so you can see that um, our XYZ zero point is right in the center of the face. I'm going to go ahead and import a solid model for the stock as well. So I click on workpiece, and go to project, import, stock. You can see that gives me the correct turn stock diameter, which is what we want to see. But I'm actually going to turn it off because I don't want to see it when we're doing our simulation and, and CAD work or CAM work here. So the first thing we're going to do is rough out this area. And the trick to do that is go to New Finishing Rotary Machine. I'm going to change to a spherical. I think we can do a 3 16th. So I forget if that tool worked or not. Um, for me, that's 21. I'll fix the speeds and feeds later. Trajectory. Experiment with this. Here we're going to go linear. I'll reduce this deviation to say 10 thou. Again, experiment with that. And I think, knock on wood, that's about it. And then you just got to click on that face. Hold down control. Click on that face. 
and we'll choose under job assignment faces. The green face looks good. Let's see what we get. Awesome. And it looks good. Let's go ahead and simulate that and see what we get. So that you can see, ooh, that actually doesn't look good. It looks like it's cut in there. Okay. We may have to reduce, use a smaller tool. Yeah, I don't like that. One thing I will say, I, you, adding stock adds it to the axial, not the radial, so that's not going to help us. What we can try, let's drive this to zero, and then let's use tool 17, which is a 1 8 inch in the middle. It was taking far too long, and I realized the deviation went to like 10 millionths of an inch. Turn it back to 1,000. One thou, we get a good toolpath. If we take a look, it doesn't appear to be crashing into the stock. There's probably a way to check this in the simulation. I should know this. But the other thing you can do, which is potentially very dangerous, but if you want to add some radial or sidewall stock, is you can lie to Sprout Cam and tell, the, tell it that the tool is actually, say, 0.13 uh, uh, inches wide, add 2.5 thou to each side of the tool. Be careful doing that, but that would lie to the CAM software and have it create a couple foul of sidewall tolerance. But I'm okay with this. The next thing we're going to do is a 2D contour. Curve. Choose this as my base surface. Oops, that's the thing. You don't click this thing first. Click close. Click base surface. Then click it. Then click that. I'll be honest with you. Spruit Cam is great for fourth axis stuff, especially when you know how to get it done. But as you guys know from the videos, I just don't use it anymore. And it's for reasons like this. It is too buggy and difficult um, to get, for most of us, to do what we want it to do. It's still a great value for fourth. And unfortunately, the Fusion 360 fourth is not something that's coming out in the next few months. Uh, I wish I wish it was. It's not. That's going to come in and clean up that inside wall, or that one there. And then lastly, we'll do the 5D. This took a couple of uh, tricks that I would not have figured out if it were not for Jason. Same thing, spherical uh, or a standard 1 8 inch ball end mill, or <laughs> not ball end mill. Change the contact tool type to flank. That's important. Well, if you look, it's because we're trying to cut with the side of the tool. If you look, go back to this geometry, the tool path we're following is on the sort of bottom corner of the tool, but the actual cutting is with the side, and that's why that makes sense. Flank is what we want. I think that might be it. So now what we can do is turn on the objects filter to select contours, double click that edge, see we get the geometry we want, click project curves. Now this was perfect. See the green that's highlighted there? That means that's what Sprout Cam is looking at to cut. If you get green on this bottom cylinder here, double click this and choose alternate front side. We'll just do it now and you'll see it makes the, for me here, the wrong part green. So I'll switch it back. Um, the only other thing I'll mention, didn't have, well I don't think it's happening here. It's not because you can see, but if it, if it sees ramping incorrectly, if it ramps in from the bottom or it thinks the tool's upside down, you can click under strategy, inverse tool axis direction. Just a quick tip. So if we click run, I think that's going to give us a good tool path. In fact, let's just simulate the whole thing here. Doing our sort of roughing moves. And coming in now and doing a cleanup of that inside wall. Perfect. And then this will be the 2D contour. And that's really cool. If you look here, you can see we are left with the correct toolpath. We want to repeat that three times. You can either choose the geometry or even easier, just click transformation along a copy axis 
A, you want to multiply it 120 degrees, and you'll do that a total of three times. That makes sense? Click Run like so. <laughs> awesome, folks. Uh, I think that was it. Again, I wish I had a better answer on other ways to do fourth axis work, but it's incredibly complex math to, to, to run this stuff, and I will say that I am excited that, um, I need to make sure that's okay in a second, actually. That don't, see? Darn it. That rotary machining is cutting in. I'll be right back to fix that. But um, the one thing I will say about Fusion 360 and HSM that it's, CAM that it's derived from is that they are, as I understand it, writing that code from scratch. And here's the thing. I'm not an expert on the industry, but most or many CAM softwares, even ones that you have no affiliation, still buy a lot of the engine or core of that software from, I think, one company that's kind of a no-brand company to most of us and sort of license that software or technology. And HSM is literally writing their own from scratch. So I think that's a mistake in the sense that it's going to cause them to take longer to get it out to market. And it's certainly frustrating. They are very proud of what it will come from it. And it's just a question of long-term benefit, short-term frustration. Let me go, be right back. Let me fix this uh, geometry here. I actually, it was wrong. It's, it's fine. To, the, it's not cutting in if we reset our simulation and we just wrap it through. You can see we are left with some sidewall stuff here, which is fine. That's why we're coming through later with the 5D to clean that up. Um, what we saw was the tool moving when it was actually over, um, actually moving between positions. I'll show you here. Okay, so yeah, we'll speed up here. Right here, it looks, that was actually, see it was actually above uh, the part when it did that. So not gonna crash into it. Let's go make some chips, folks.